This is the Power Producers Podcast, where we are refining and redefining the sales game. Rule number one is you have to believe in yourself. You're the only one who doesn't think you belong in this appointment. The prospect has already validated your existence by scheduling time with you. Get it through your head you belong here, go in there, crush it, and close the deal. A place where sales professionals can come to learn from other sales professionals and thought leaders that have mastered their craft. The difference between a good salesperson and a best-in-class salesperson is only two minutes. By spending an extra two minutes on what you might think is a mundane task in the sales game, you separate yourselves from the pack, you grow your book of business, you close more deals, and you retain your accounts. As well as their peers who are still striving for perfection to achieve their why. I have a wife and four kids. Failure is not an option. Real sales professionals. Real stories. Real results. It's no different than being a professional baseball player. You can't be a one-trick pony. You have to be a five-tool player in order to succeed in this game. This is the Power Producers Podcast. Production redefined. Are you ready to feel the power? Hey, everybody. Welcome to the Power Producers Podcast. We are refining and redefining the sales game today. Kyle and I are fortunate enough. To have the one and only Miss Carrie Reynolds on with us today. How you doing, Carrie? Fantastic. Good. So listen, um, everybody starts out telling us their backstory. Now, I happen to know because I asked before we got on that Alan Galvez Insurance is your dad. So I'm interested in hearing if you went the way of the Amish. I'll keep it in Ohio. Went the way of the Amish and uh, went wild for a couple of years before you came back to the family business or <laughs> if you just migrated right into that role. Okay. So my, my story probably echoes a lot of others, especially when it comes to a family insurance business. My dad started in the industry in 71 and I was born in 73. So I grew up in the industry. He worked um, for another agency for about 10 years. And then he decided to open up his own shop uh, in 88. And I was still in school. I graduated from college in 96. And about a month before college graduation, I called him up crying on the phone because I did not have a job. And I called him at the office. It was in the middle of the day. And he picked up the phone and I, I was just sobbing. And he said, Carrie, because my dad is very, very uh, even tempered. And he's just got one of those voices where he can just settle you down. So he goes, Carrie, he says, it's okay. He said, Kyle, Kyle is laughing because I am not even tempered at all. And my I voice know. will not calm you down. If I'm not, it's not, a, not a soothing voice. And, and, and it's even worse. That's why he's always been so good with clients because yeah. he's just really able to, I don't know. He's got this quality about him. Um, but in any case, so he, he got me kind of, he talked me Is your dad Morgan Freeman? Yeah, right. <laughs> right. <laughs> but he talked me off the ledge and he said, I got an idea for you. He goes, why don't you come to the office and you can work here? And if it doesn't work, so be it. At least you've gotten some experience to put on your resume. And if it does work, then great. You know, mm. here we are. He never pushed me to be in the business. He never once said, I would love to have you at the office. Never once. Uh, and it's funny that was in 96 and it's now 24 years later. So I literally came out of college into the office and I've been here ever since. Wow. So Kyle, there are two people on this call that were born in Ohio in 1973. There you go. <laughs> what are the odds? I like right? it. <laughs> yeah. No kidding. That's, that's hilarious. So yeah. And part of the reason Kyle was smirking is because I actually sent him a video clip yesterday or last night that I asked my wife to record because we have taken our weed eater to the small engine repair place twice to have it fixed. And I went to fire it up and use it on Sunday and it did not work properly. It was bogging down again. So I said, I'd like to record a message that I'm going to ask you to play to the guy when you take this back tomorrow morning. And it was a very short message and Kyle was humored and my wife never went anywhere close to the small repair place. No chance. She drove straight to Lowe's and bought a new weed. Right. So how much was the repair cost? $50. Both times. 
one time because they didn't fix it right the first time. So the second I time, just have a fundamental issue with this because a, a new weed whacker is like a hundred bucks. Bingo. Okay. Okay, A, don't ever say weed whacker to me. As a former landscape professional, I understand the terminology to be line trimmer or oh. weed eater. Mm. Um, but the other thing is the new one was 200 bucks, So mm. it was worth the – the other one was almost brand new. It just sat for a few years because we hired somebody. Then I got upset that they weren't doing a good enough job, and I realized if I spend 350 bucks to buy a second lawnmower – we can actually incorporate all four kids, me and Andrea, working on the yard, have the whole thing done in 27 minutes. And my payback period on the lawnmower was roughly 1.75 months. <laughs> Whatever, dude. Ask the big cat. It's called a weed whacker. Yeah, well, that's Especially fine. in Ohio. Yeah, I know. Exactly. I called it weed whacker, and I kept getting um, kind of reprimanded. Weeds. It doesn't so, eat them. It doesn't, it doesn't swallow them and chew them. And, and I think and, line trimmer sounds way more. I think you know, line classic. trimmer. No, that's that's I'm not even going to say what I was about to say, but go ahead. Anyways. Yeah. So, Carrie, so, talk a little bit yeah, about talk the about you. agency. <laughs> like, we can talk about ourselves I, I all just, the time. I was waiting for you guys to finish. I'm like, OK, well, ju- I'll just listen and you guys can jump in. <laughs> yeah, you prob- want to get on our prob- podcast and listen to us talk about yard equipment. Hopefully you'll put that. <laughs> you'll edit that out of the final segment. Oh, yeah, there you go. Man. So talk a little bit about mix of business and all of that. You came in, you've been there for 24 years Correct. at this point. What uh, what are you working on? I mean, are you guys all personal lines, some personal, some commercial? What's that look like? So our mix is uh, we're predominantly personal lines. Uh, I, I would say if I had to guess it, um, percentages, I would say that we're probably, oh, I don't know, 70 percent personal uh, 20% commercial. And then the other 10% is a mix of Medicare supplements and life insurance. So you've been Good. in the family agency, you know, for a while, was there ever any, uh, butting of heads? Was there ever any like, okay, this is, this is not somewhere where I need to be like, you know, what, like, how, how did that go? Cause it's, it's usually not a smooth situation a hundred percent of the time. Right. Yeah. Well, so when you, yeah, of course, when you have family um, right. involved in the business, you're going to have arguments and you're going to have disagreements. Um, I guess, well, there's a lot of story for me to tell. I'll, I'll, I'll condense some of it. said you're a storyteller, let it rip. Yeah, well, <laughs> absolutely. So when I first came to, to the agency, um, I was just an employee. Okay. So when you're just an employee, then, you know, most of the time you're, you know, and and your dad, it's, he's your dad, but he's still your superior. Mm -hmm. So, you know, especially when you're new to the industry and you don't know half the stuff that he knows, you're going to defer more to him that I think that just goes without saying. So I would say in those first couple of years, um, I focused on, I had gone to school to get some, um, not a degree in marketing, but I took a lot of marketing classes in college. So when I came on board, my goal was not to get licensed right away, but to do more of the marketing activities. Because Mm -hmm. when you start your own agency, you're just worried about writing enough policy so you would start to death. So he didn't necessarily have the, the training or the time to focus on the marketing activities. So I said, hey, I'll do that. That's fun. I enjoy it. I just got out of school. You know, I can use that coursework and I can I can make it work. So, you know, things like sending out surveys to customers and getting feedback. You know, this is before SurveyMonkey. I mean, you know, technology is, oh, my gosh, it's amazing in just 24 years, you know, 24 months even what has changed. But I came on and I did mostly marketing stuff probably for the first year I was here. And then I went and got licensed. I got my life and health license first. And then I dove into that. Then I got my PNC license after that. And then I kind of moved. So it was probably several years that I kind of just got my feet wet, understood, you know, more of the nuances of the industry, started working with customers. Um, So I probably wasn't very rebellious at that point. As time went on, um, especially as I started to learn about new things, new technologies, new techniques, new processes, I probably spoke up a lot more. I say probably because, I, you know, going back 24 years, you can't you don't know every you can't remember every little thing that happened. Um, the other thing about that is it's not only was my dad, my boss, but my mom worked here, too. Oh, man. And I'm an only child. <laughs> so that 
you know, she she was never licensed, but she worked up in the front desk. So she was fielding call, you know. And were you and were you still at home at this point in time too? No, so I it was like was. so sometimes I look back at that and go, How in the world did I ever survive? <laughs> yeah, just because nonstop. When I, when I moved back, I you know, I just moved back in with mom and dad. Right. Um, it was just it wasn't a big deal. And um we we tried to put up a pretty firm boundary of not talking about work at home if mm-hmm. we could. And it was easier because I was just, again, the employee. You know, I mm-hmm. think that makes a very firm line. Um, it wasn't until I'm trying to think, I think it was 2002 that dad and I decided to become partners. Okay. Which is a whole other layer of, oh, my goodness. I don't want to say drama. But there's just more. There's just more. Different dynamic. Yeah. Yeah. There's just so much, you know, things are just amplified by that relationship. So we became partners. Um, He was still majority partner, which is fine. I mean, you know, he's the one that built it. It wasn't a big issue to me. Uh, So then we had to really learn to work a lot more cooperatively together in the running of the business. So now I actually had a say in how things were going to go, you know, whether that was HR, whether that was marketing, whether that was sales, you know, just, you know, pick a topic. Uh, mm-hmm. And at that point, he he had to listen to me maybe a little bit more seriously. You know, he never thought I was an idiot or anything. But when you're the boss, you get to make the rules. It's just that simple. So he and I had to learn how to work better together in order to make the office runs smoothly. Uh, the interesting part about that, though, that I'll say, for the most part, we got along, I think, relatively well. We butted heads over, you know, Dad, you got to get out of the, you know, the technology of the 80s or not or whatever. You know, we got to move forward. We got to talk about a management system. We have to talk about e-signatures. We had to I had to really push him on some of those things. I'm like, this is what our customer wants. Um the interesting part about that though is that he had still several people in the office, his people that he hired. And suddenly I was no longer a fellow employee. I was their boss too. Mm -hmm. That was a very, very hard shift. And some people honestly never made the shift ever. There was some resentment. There was, um, it, 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 there was a big challenge because when I had this idea, we're going to do this process you know, when we don't want to do that pro- or we don't want to do this or we don't think that's a good idea or we're very resistant to my ideas. That was really hard because although technically I'm a boss, not for a long time did I ever really get the opportunity to be a boss mm-hmm. because he was still here. He was still mostly in charge. So it, that was that was difficult for me. That was hard because I was like, wait a second. You know, I've got all the stuff I want to do or the things that we should do to move forward, you know, write more business. And I was just meeting resistance at every turn. Uh, that was that was pretty rough. How um, did you get past that? Like, was there? Um... Well, so funny, that, funny that you say that. Um, it was actually a combination of things. I won't get into too many of the great details, but in the past couple of years, there's been significant change here at the office. Mm-hmm. Um Basically what happened, my parents split up and uh, this was just last year. And at the same time, I was experiencing some staff turnover. Mm -hmm. So what happened is, is in the natural course of things, the people that were resistant were no longer here. So I got to start fresh with new people who didn't know me different. You know, my processes were now their processes. So in a way, I shouldn't say this, but at least from a business standpoint, it might have been somewhat of a blessing. You know, you know, they talk about having the wrong people in in the seats, you know, wrong people in the wrong seats or whatever. I had kind of just been going along, just dealing with it for many years. When that happened, it was kind of a wake up call. Carrie, you got to get the right people in the right seats. You know, when you do that then you will be able to be a boss and do things and make things happen um, without encountering that resistance. And that's just just because of that. Um, The people going, me hiring other people who are more forward thinking, 
you know, per, younger, not to be mean, but every once in a while, you know, as we tend, as we get older, including my, I include myself in that, we tend to get very rigid in our ways. And we don't, we don't want to do things in a different way or look at something in a different way. You get people that don't think like that. So it's a non-issue, you know, and the younger people tend to, you know, think they're brought up with all the technology and everything else that goes with it. So it's just not an issue. Um, so yeah, just with people leaving that allowed me to kind of start fresh. You mentioned technology there. What kind of stuff have you implemented? So what we've got here at the office, um, of course I have my website. I'm, I'm going to get it moved to a different vendor here very soon, but that's in the works, so, but it'll still be a pretty awesome website. Um, so we got our website. I use agency revolution for automated email marketing, which I'm a huge believer in. Um, I had, we have, you know, e-signature capabilities. Mm -hmm. um, I'm not the most technologically advanced out there, but I'm, I'm okay with that because it does what we need it to do. If you get too many things that you have to learn, I think you're just never going to utilize the full capacity of your tools. And then you just waste, then you just waste money. Is yeah, the best technology is the technology you're actually going to use. There you go. That's how I think. I mean, I I'm constantly blown away by the level that some people have gotten to, but that's okay for them. You know, I just want to use what we need to get our work done, make it easier. You know, the staff's happy using it. You know, it gets us. You know, it does our marketing. It gets us leads, et cetera, so on and so forth. So that, of course, we have a management system, but I don't know many that don't. I mean, that's just kind of status quo anymore. Uh, sure. That's. Uh, oh, we do have an agency app. What am I thinking? Hello, we have a mobile, um, a mobile app that people do use. So you know, maybe maybe I have more than I think, but I, I'm, <laughs> I'm going to say that's probably enough because you can't know all the things. Um, and you have to be able to use them and understand them. Yeah, I think every agency out there should stop what they're doing right now and print their last month's bank statement and look at all of the crap they're paying for. You know, isn't that the truth, though? I mean, you it, can bankrupt yourself just in subscriptions. I did that totally. a couple months ago, and it, I was blown away at how much money we were spending on yeah. just stuff, different things. And, I mean, that's – the blessing and the curse of the internet yeah. is the fact that people know what everybody else is doing, right? So they think, well, Carrie's got this awesome system. I need to go have the same system Carrie does because then my agency will be just like hers. When that couldn't be further from the truth, right? Right, right. exactly. Exactly. You got to you got to use it. I mean, otherwise you might as well just take the money and flush it down the toilet. <laughs> Truly. Yep, no, I'm with you. So it's uh quiet in my office because of covid everybody's pretty much working remote kyle's working remote mm -hmm. he's he's normally the agent in charge at the northern office how bad's covid affected you guys you know i'm gonna be very honest with you i consider myself very fortunate that i work in an industry where i don't actually have to see people or rely on walk-in traffic so yeah we, we would same with us the answer to your question is it really hasn't. It really hasn't. And I know I, I don't I, I'm I am, you know, we're doing this around Thanksgiving time. So I can say that I'm very thankful for that particular fact, because, you know, just looking at I'm downtown and I can just look out, out my front windows and I saw for about, oh, my gosh, a couple of months. It was a ghost town down here. Mm -hmm. I mean, there's a lot of retail spaces down where I'm at. So where where are you? You're still in Ohio? Yeah, I'm in Belmont. Where? It's an hour west of Columbus. It's a small yeah. town, about 13,000. And my office is right in the heart of downtown. Got it. So when I looked out my window, I mean, it was it was, it was was spooky. It yeah. was like one of those horror movies, you know, that you see. It was just really spooky. But thankfully, based on the technology that we have at our disposal. Oh, because something else we have through our management system is texting. So mm -hmm. we can, te you know, so I guess that, yeah, that's been a, those things, the e-signature, the texting, you know, even good old fashioned email, mm -hmm. it has been a godsend having to interact with people because otherwise you're dead in the water. I mean, you can't, you can't sell policies. You can't service customers. I, you can't do anything. Mm -hmm. and so I'm, like I said, I'm very, very fortunate that it honestly, 
didn't negatively affect us. Now I say that now, now watch, but I hopefully you know, I'm, I'm, I don't want to be too superstitious, but it's been, it's been okay. Now, has it slowed down here and that? Well, yes. I mean, people are freaked out, right. absolutely freaked out, but it's, you know, the, the, the staff's being paid, the bills are being paid. I mean, it's, you know, it's okay. And I run, it's a lean operation. We're a small agency. So I only have two uh, agents beside myself. My dad's here, but he's here on a part-time basis. And so, you know, luckily I didn't have a huge payroll that I had to meet mm -hmm. because some people could have that issue. You know, if all of a sudden the revenues are, are decreasing, you know, you got 50 people, you're like, whoa, this is a problem. Well, me, it, I don't have that situation. So it, it's it's been pretty much business as usual, luckily. You know, there yep. were a few people that might have fussed that our door had been locked. But we've made accommodations. I mean, the door is still locked. It's been locked since March. But we're now appointment only. Call, you know, or if we need to put an envelope on the door and you're running around town doing errands, come get the form, sign it and put it back in the envelope. You know, it's old school, but it works. You know, small towns, I think you can do that kind of stuff, perhaps easier. But sure. it's it's been okay. And I put an envelope on my door. It's going to be gone. And somebody's going to be what really upset mean, that they didn't have money in it. Small town USA. So for me, those kinds of things are, are non-issues, quite frankly. You know? No, I know. I miss it. I mean, like, like, I took form, really, if you're going to steal an accord form, dude, I'm going to just give you like five bucks to go to McDonald's and get something to eat. <laughs> yeah. I mean, come on now. You're not going to sell that on the street. Um, yeah. So, you know, luckily, it's just, I'm, again, I will say it again, even though this industry drives me crazy sometimes, I, I feel fortunate to be in one of the best industries in the world. Definitely and flexible. This, this pandemic has shown me that without hesitation. Yeah. I mean, we haven't really slowed down ourselves either. We've been, you know, pre COVID, we had the capabilities of doing everything that we're doing now. Um, it's just forced the hand of all the other agencies to either adapt and kind of catch up or not. Um, but right. I mean, we were, we were doing video proposals and, um, you know, those sort of things long, long before. Um, so yeah, I, I agree. We, you know, we've talked about it a few times on here about how we've been just as busy as, um, you know, as, as we were pre COVID. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I'm, I'm, I, I'm very fortunate. Absolutely. How has your staff adapted? Well, again, they've only been here a year. These are the, these are the new people, right? The people mm -hmm. that I got rid of the ones that were resistant. I've got the new people. Uh, they don't know any different. Right. You know, we've, we've, I got the, I don't know, this is going to sound funny, but I don't remember if I had the e-signature in place before the ladies came or after, but when I said it, they were like, you need to do that. Absolutely. You know, and they used the texting oh, you have to. system like crazy. I mean, it is, they have been really, really good. Well, and let me, t so let me tell you about this too. When we're talking about technology, um, I, I made the decision because there was always that possibility that the uh, agents would have to work from home, right? We know this, this is, you know, the remote working thing. That's never been a thing here. We've always been in the office. End of story. So I decided I need to figure something out. So if people have to stay at home, they can still do their work without missing a beat. Mm -hmm. So my computer guy had a suggestion. He said, OK, get rid of their towers. Instead of using a tower, use a laptop. The laptop acts as your tower. That's their computer. And when and it will just hook it into this, I forget even what the system is. We'll just hook it into this central hub thing. He said, VPN. Yeah, no, no, it was uh it was to connect all the equipment together. Nonetheless, um, he said all you have to do is they just take it out, they put it in their case. They oh, you're talking about a docking station. Yeah, I'm sorry, yeah, docking station, docking station. Said all they have to do is take it. And he goes, it's secure. He said. It's still their computer. So whether it's at the office or whether it's at home, it's got the same programs. It's got the same everything. And uh, I'll tell you what, that was a godsend because I was worried about that. I don't know. I'm not a tech person. I'm like, oh, my gosh, how are we going to are we going to dial in? What are we going to do? And um, that was a great suggestion. And it has worked beautifully. You know, one of my ladies, um, while her daughter was doing remote work, she took every Thursday off and she worked from home. So she would take the computer Wednesday night, take it home, and she'd take her phone home, 
you know, that's the other reason we got VoIP. You know, we were on regular old phone lines. We got VoIP put in place because I knew that was a possibility. And I'll never forget the first time that she was working from home and I hit her extension and she answered. It just blew me away. I'm like, <laughs> I know, I know. I'm a simple person. Just understand that. It's but magic. It was, <laughs> but it was the funniest thing. I'm like, whoa, it sounds like she's right here. And, and then she was able to, you know, log on to all of her websites, do blah, 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 and, you know, service policies. And, you know, there was a few things that she couldn't quite do because she didn't take a scanner home. She didn't take a printer home. But, you know, for the most part, um, there wasn't really a loss of, of functionality. So, right. I, you know, again, I, I leave that to my computer person. He had a great suggestion there. He was like, just do this. Unplug it. Boom. Off you go. I'm like, cool. That's a great idea. And it's worked very well. So I feel relatively prepared. You know, heaven forbid we have to go that route again. I don't know that we'll go back to normal. You mean ever? Our, I'm talking about in our agency. Oh, you personally. Know. Yeah. Yeah. I don't, I don't know if we ever will. Yeah. You uh, know, yeah. it, I, part, part of me is considering getting rid of the office Kyle's in. Because uh, I don't I, need I, it. I was thinking about that the other day and just didn't know if it was something just to kind of have a, like a brick and mortar footprint up in this it area. Is. Um, it is. Because and we've talked about it before, but I mean, it, cause this, this area is blown up like crazy sure. um, where I live. I, I live like two minutes across the street from our, from our North office carry. Okay. And um, still in Tampa, but yeah, I, right? yeah, it's, it's like, it's like 20 minutes North of gotcha. Tampa. Yeah. Um, but uh, yeah, I mean, th- I, I, nobody walks in there unless they're trying to sell us something. You know, it's not, we don't get foot traffic. We're not well, that type of agency. You have a different business model though, too. Yeah, yeah we do. Right. But I would think even we're, we're really angling to grow that, that office for, especially with personal lines. Okay, for the future because That's where the growth is. But even then it's the demographic that's moving there is not the demographic that's going to come walking in. I mean, they probably don't even know what a checkbook is, let alone, you know, dropping a check off. Don't it cracks me up. Customer, absolutely. I understand I, that. Yeah. Yeah. I could I could take my ATM card out of my wallet and hand it to one of my sons and say, go get a hundred bucks out and be completely confident in the fact that I will still have that hundred dollars after five minutes of them trying to figure out the ATM. They just don't they don't think about stuff like that right. because and, and it's crazy be, because I tell them all the time. You know, I've I've watched how technology has been built and evolved. So you were born with all of this stuff. I watched how this stuff yeah. got built. And so I have the ability to recognize technology trends and everything else. But if you think about it, there's really no reason for them to even know what an ATM is at this point because you've got Apple Pay and Venmo and Cash okay. App yep. and PayPal and all of this. And mm-hmm. everything's almost like cryptocurrency that they're sending back and forth to each That's other. Cra- it's crazy, man. It is crazy. It, 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 it's crazy to think about, to be honest. No, what's crazy to think about is the fact that 20 years ago we were all operating off of Motorola flip phones <laughs> and now our entire life is controlled including those cash transactions. I mean, the iPod, look at the iPod. The iPod was one of the greatest uh, inventions of the 20th century. And it's completely obsolete at this point because they figured out a way to combine it with your phone. Right. Right. Yeah. It's, um, dude, I remember, I remember when the first one came out and then like the nano or the mini and all those came out and it's like, you had to have it. And it was 200, 300 bucks. And I had one. Um, and, and then it didn't even take, I, I, I don't even know what the time frame was from when those came out to when maybe five years, maybe yeah, like completely, five, completely, five, five years. completely obsolete. But I did see a commercial the other day for some new, I think Samsung phone. That's basically a flip phone. It's, it's, you know, it looks like any other smartphone, but it closes and, yeah. and half it was, it was strange. Think to me, how many but, screens that's going to save. What's that? Yeah, no, how, how many screens, how many screens that'll save. That's going to save. Yeah. Yeah, it um it was interesting, but anyhow. Well, little no, little known fact, the groomsman gift in Annie and my my wedding was um iPods oh. that had the people's initials engraved on them. Oh my god. Yeah. I had my name I had my name on the back of it too. So yeah, it was crazy. I mean, yeah. you just it it blows my mind and that's why when I look at all of the stuff that's going on in the insurance industry right now, 
who knows what it's going to look like two or three years right. from now, because we're in a point where there's so much technology that's being developed and pushed out. And that's been amplified by the fact that COVID exists right. because people are able to spend more time focusing on it. You'll get a kick out of this. My office, I could probably back in my old days, step out my front door and as hard as I could throw a softball and hit your buddy, Michelle. Oh, we're that close. That is funny. Her new office is literally like on the same road as what mine is just a little further down. Oh, How funny is that? Yeah. Crazy. And I never met her. I never met her until we were in San Diego. Isn't that crazy? And, it's yeah, small, it small is. world or not. Well, yeah, and especially considering, I mean, again, it just goes to show different sizes and shapes of agencies. I'm going after, you know, middle market commercial business, and she's plugging into the chambers of commerce right. and the yard sale groups on Facebook and everything. That's what she does. And we would never, ever cross paths. Right. We would never. And it's 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 actually, it's kind of crazy because um, it, it's hard to believe you just have to fly five and a half, six hours from home to meet somebody who literally lives in your backyard. True, true. But that being said, it also gives you a great referral source should you need it, right? I mean, you oh, yeah, no, I mean, that, if you have to. Yeah, no, I mean, I send her anything. If it is not cookie cutter vanilla, know that we don't have to really stretch to do it. Right. Homeowners, anything outside of like right there in that picture perfect account automatically. And it's not that we're sending her garbage business. Like I have a, a good sized commercial account that the owner and his wife bought a new house and they were getting ready to close on it. And they waited till the last minute to say, Hey, David, guess what? We're buying a new house. And well, guess what? The problem is that the roof on the home was over 20 years old. And I don't have any pull with homeowners carriers because I don't have enough volume with them. So I told Michelle, I'm like, look, this is like a five or six thousand dollar premium yeah. policy. Go, go get it. You know, if there's any way you can get this done, mm -hmm. she's like, well, as long as I have a signed work order and invoice for the, um, the for the roof, I can get them to do it. Blah 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 blah. And sure enough, she pulled it off and she got it. And I'm a hundred percent confident in sending that over to her. Absolutely. You know, I don't have any concerns whatsoever about doing that. And I mean, I, I would think vice versa too if she ever had an opportunity. Yeah on something that was out of what she does. She has a safe place. She can send it because I'm not going to go try and poach her book of Absolutely. business and, yep. and vice versa. You know, it's just, it's, it's cool that we're in an industry where we could be competing and we do to a certain degree against each other, but we can do it in a friendly way. And it's not like you have to worry about if you're going to get knifed in the back when you, you know, are walking down the aisle at Publix and your competitor is right behind you. It's just not, not something that enters into the realm of possibility. It's 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 actually pretty good. Then there are those people that I do really enjoy competing against sure. and target them actually. So only thing you're poaching is eggs in the sous vide, right? <laughs> yeah. No. Listen, man. I, we bad. finally no, we bad. finally yeah we finally got our kitchen back. And by the way, I poach my eggs the old fashioned way. Whatever. I don't need a sous vide to poach. I bet my I eggs. bet you do your poached eggs on the green egg as well, right? <laughs> Just like you no, know, but, you know it's, it's funny because we were lining up the the menu for um for Thanksgiving and I'm gonna I bought a big thing of pork belly at Costco oh, yeah. and I'm gonna do pork belly burnt ends which are just insanely good so nice. I'm doing that tomorrow morning. We're doing KFC. It sounds about right. <laughs> Let me ask you, does it? Do you guys always go off on these tangents with all of your guests? Yes. Mm -hmm. okay, yeah. You. I thought. I thought. My God, am I that boring that we? we no, I have no. <laughs> I have. I have this thing where I can't stay on task, and I have you're, to just start okay. talking I'm about. Funny that way, I'm just sitting here going, "Oh man, what am I doing wrong? It's all good." You're you're doing absolutely nothing wrong. We no. just we find these little holes to go down. So you're fine. listen, I I do have a question for you though, and this one is kind of serious, and it's something. I mean, I know I can freely speak for Kyle when I say this too, but what you know. We we had Teresa and Denise on a couple months back at the beginning of October. Okay, we've had a we've had a couple of other female guests on, mm -hmm. and I, I want to hear your perspective. And your perspective may be different because you're again you're coming out of small town USA, so you may not be exposed to some of the same things. But I also don't want to make that blanket assumption because you know issues are everywhere, and I think that a lot of the time they exist because they haven't been tabled, but. I am interested in whether or not you have ever identified anything that has been a roadblock or an obstacle to you that was based on gender as you've tried to advance your career in, in the insurance industry. 
Um, well, that's a yes. Sorry, sorry, didn't mean to go from rabbit hole to so serious. Or... Yeah, <laughs> like a serious. Well, okay. So I've always professed myself to be the advocate for women insurance agents. I've, I've, I've freely said that. I'm like, if I can beat that bandwagon, I will. Because sometimes I don't think it's it's beaten enough. Maybe others will disagree with me. That's their prerogative. This is America after all. But after 24 years, I've certainly seen a lot, right? So when I first started, I will say, first of all, I didn't have the experience, okay? People have been used to dealing with my father, right? And uh, so, so you know, and I'm female, you know, I'm just going to say it out loud. Those were all just roadblocks because a lot of the customers that he that he gathered over the years were similar to him. You usually write business, especially on personal lines, you write business within about 10 years, either side of your age. Okay. So a lot of those older fellows were uncomfortable talking to me about insurance. I I can, I can say that as a definitive fact without hesitation. Mm -hmm. Uh, What did I, you, you know, is it fair or not? No, but unfortunately, Sometimes that may just be how it is. So what did I do? I Let me ask you this real quick though. Do you think it was as much because of gender or was it because of age, mm-hmm. a combination of the two, or even the fact that you were actually the daughter? I you know, I think it's all of them. I hate to say it, you know. I mean, because then there's some nepotism there. They're like, well, that's a kid, and you know, so if we have a disagreement, then you know it's gonna cause issues with here. Again, family business, yay, all that goes with it. Um I think it's all of those factors. So what did I do? I mean, I could have sit and stewed about it for the next 10 years or however long it was. I just had to keep making myself better at my craft. You know, I would go to the CIC classes. I would gather my knowledge. I would study. I would um, learn my stuff. And eventually you get over that hump. Eventually. And I'll be honest with you. If somebody started giving me any shade about, you know, I'm like, I know what I'm talking about. Okay. You either deal with me or you don't. It's real simple. That's just me though. I don't take anybody's crap. I just don't. And it's like, dude, I've done this for how, you know, even if it was five years or 10 years, I'm like, that's still more knowledge than you've accumulated just as a person on the, you know, out in the community. So Mm -hmm. the respect that I know what I'm talking about or go talk to somebody else. Because I'm, you know, you're just not going to belittle me. I'm just not going to have it. I know what I'm talking about. I've made this my life's work. You know, how you feel about it is really on you, not on me. Um, and so that's kind of how I dealt with it. And I got really, really good at my knowledge uh, on purpose because I felt that I had to. Um, and as time went on, I, there were still <laughs> there were still some people that just refused to work with a woman. Um they, they wanted to talk to dad. And you know what? I'm probably not going to change everybody's mind. So I'm at that point, I'm like, okay, then talk to him. And as he's gone along in the business, he has started to pull back, right? So he doesn't do what he did 40 years ago. He only does Medicare supplements. So as time went on, his natural, um, you know, he didn't, update his skill set anymore. He didn't learn about that software system. He didn't get real good with the management system. He eventually started saying to the customers, I can't help you. You know, you need to talk to, you know, Gary or or this agent or this or whoever, you know, happened to be here at the time. So it kind of worked out that way too, as he started to scale back people, you know, didn't have a choice. Now, if they did still didn't want, I mean, that's, again, that's on them. But, you know, I mean, it's all ladies here. It, it really, even the cat is female. We have an <laughs> office cat. So it's, and we, we are very confident. We know what we're doing. We take very good care of people. And, um, you know, eventually I got to the point where it's like, you either deal with me or you need to go elsewhere. You know, and you can appreciate this when you spent most of your life, you know, create creating your life's work and getting good at it and, and schooling yourself. Somebody telling you otherwise is very upsetting. You know, don't it's like, don't tell me. I know what I'm talking about. I do it every day. If you got a hang up, that's on you, buddy. 
Yeah, I think, you know, it's interesting that part part of that has to do with probably the generation yeah. that your dad is mm-hmm. in. Yep. And mm-hmm. also maybe just dial that back just a hair mm-hmm. to a little bit younger. I mean, I still think there's people our age that think that way, but probably not as many. It's gotten <clears throat> it's gotten better. It, it is- yeah, but it hasn't gone away. I think that that's the whole thing that, yeah. that that's nuts. And I mean, what triggered my questions for for uh, Denise and Teresa yeah. was a thread that I had read in one of the Facebook groups where somebody shared text messages and other things they had received from a client after hours. I remember that now. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I was just, I was absolutely blown away. And I mean, call it ignorance, call it whatever you want. Um, Part of it is that's just not how I think. So I can't imagine other people thinking that way. right? Right. You know, I don't, my wife, I live, my wife is as much of an alpha male as I am, mm-hmm. you know, as far as that goes, she's got a great job and Kyle's in the same boat. Mm-hmm. Our wives have great jobs. They're very successful. We're supportive of them. They're supportive of us. I have no problem at all admitting that she was the breadwinner when I started the agency mm-hmm. from scratch with nothing but cash. Couldn't have done it without her. Right. Um, I have no problem telling anybody that I'll say it till the day that I die, but You know, I also think part of it is the fact it's not just for me that I don't think that way. So I can't imagine anybody else does, but we don't, we don't table the discussions. We don't bring those things up. People, you know, they, and I, again, I, I say this every time I talk about something that has the potential to be controversial, even though I don't think anything should ever be controversial. I think we should all be able to, you know, name what the, problem is and it works through it like you know mm-hmm. grown adults. adults yeah imagine that but <laughs> you know look at look at where we're at as a country right now and how many things that are going on that probably could have been solved very easily early on if people could just have a conversation and intellectually mm-hmm. discuss things and disagree without allowing emotion to get involved right but i, I do think that part of the issue that we have, like me looking, I shouldn't be 47 years old and be absolutely blown away that that's what somebody's dealing with, right? That a female in my industry is dealing with that. I shouldn't, I shouldn't be there because, and thankfully I'm not because that was brought up and tabled. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, you know, I think we need to force those conversations to happen more and more because I wouldn't feel comfortable with my wife if she were, let's say she was a marketing rep for one of the insurance companies and she had to go in mm-hmm. to call on male producers all the time. You have, I mean, my confidence level, quite frankly, is about 0% that they would behave themselves the right way. Mm. That's it just, it is, though, but you're probably right. It is what it is. I mean, maybe one out of every agency, two out of every agency understand that. But I mean, I think it's twofold. Number one, it's not tabled enough, but number two, men aren't held accountable to those actions, right? And there's no repercussions for acting that way. And I don't think that it needs to come from women. I think it needs to come from other men that are tired of dealing with the, the nonsense and, and they hold them accountable for being what they are. Call it what it is. Why do these people have opportunities, right? I mean, this isn't this isn't somebody that I would want my daughter bringing home. Right. I mean, my my perspective on a lot of stuff changed. And again, it's not like I was a chauvinist or anything like that. But me, the lens that I view the world through now is the father of a little girl mm-hmm. is much different than it was as the father of three little boys. Yes. Mm-hmm. And so you know, I I every time I say something, do something, you know. One of my sons does that. I'm constantly thinking if Caroline were to bring somebody into the house and they said that, acted that way, how much leeway would I give them before I just floored them? Mm -hmm. Because that's what would happen. I mean, I wouldn't put up with anybody treating my little girl that way. I certainly wouldn't put up with them treating my wife that way. But I think we need to get our act together, and I think we need to be able to have more conversations around it because it is still a problem, just like race is a problem, just like – 
you know, I could I could go on and on, right. and I'm not going to. It, it, it's just a matter of we need to to talk through those things. So you, on the other hand, just got back from a place where none of that is an issue because yeah. everybody is accepted in Key West. Yeah, <laughs> absolutely. So you had a great trip, Thank right? You. What was your favorite? So for those of you that don't know, I fashion myself to be a part-time armchair tour guide of Key West and have written a comprehensive guide of some of my favorite places, which is now being updated because the last time we went, we made the decision we were only going to new places. And I found some cool stuff that we didn't have on the guide. But of all of the stuff that I recommended, what was your favorite thing? Oh, my gosh. Um, well... So we could talk about food and we could talk about an activity because those are really different things. Uh, the, we got time for both. Okay, fair enough. <laughs> so the, the highlight of what I went, because I've been there multiple times and I've done different things each time I've gone. Uh, this time I did go to the, the little White House and I appreciate history and presidential history and World War II era. And that was a really cool thing to go do. It was well worth it. It um, The tour guide was phenomenal. Just seeing the interior of the house was just, it was, it was, it was a lot of fun. So I'm glad we that took, I did that. I didn't get to we, do it last time and I loved it. We took the kids down there uh, for at spring break uh, two or three years ago mm -hmm. and they actually have an Easter egg hunt on the grounds of the little oh, white no house. Kidding, they got, fun. they got to do that. Yeah, it was pretty like, cool. Beautiful. And it was just, it was a, it was a lot of fun. So I'm glad I went and did that. Um, as for food, now I wish I had the list that you gave me because I don't anymore. Um, where did I go uh, that I really, really like? Oh, so um, the lobster roll. What was that place? DJ's Clam DJ's Shack. Jack. Totally dive looking place. But that lobster, and I've had lobster rolls in Boston. And I'll tell you what. I would hold that one up against any in Boston. It was so yeah, good. You know, that's the thing, though. They, that's Maine Lobster. That's it was not, so good. Right. So there is a DJ's Clam Shack directly across the street from my in-law's condo in Madeira. Oh, yep. And and Indian Rocks or whatever, right? Yeah. And the lobster roll is is on point. That's what we get every time. It was really right. it's the, no, it's, it's the same. It's the same DJ's clam shack. There's only two of them. It's the right. one in Key West and the one up there. Yeah. It was very yeah. good. That, that yeah. was fun. I hadn't, I hadn't visited them before. And I always, when I go someplace, I'm there for the, the general scenery, the landscape, but I'm also there to sample the cuisine because you can tell a lot about a place by what food they have available. So, you can tell a lot about me by my sampling of those places cuisine. Right. So that was that was some really 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 good food. I was, mean, you, know was, what? Uh, you can't go wrong with any sort of seafood down there because it's it, you'll never get it fresher. I mean, I can't get that fresh. here. They basically right. take it off the boat, slap it on your plate. I mean, that's when I go down there. That's why I make usage of all the seafood because it's just so phenomenal. So and a lot of those places you can catch fish and bring it into them, and, and yeah. they'll, yeah, they'll that's make what it for I've you. Heard. Now, I don't fish, so that's never going to happen. But um, <laughs> you know. that's what we do. We go out when we go out on our full day charter. We'll typically go and we'll take a subset of whatever we catch, and we'll either go to hogfish or half shells or. Um, I had hogfish. Mm -mm -mm. Or yeah, Dante's or or Conch Republic. They'll they'll all. They'll, I mean, half shells is awesome, man, because they'll fry it, blacken it, whatever. They'll oh, serve it too. with the sides, the whole thing. Oh my goodness, it's so good. I, I mean, I did my little tour of places. It, 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 if you could have seen me just make my progression along, it was pretty funny. But yeah, totally amazing was, place. Was Caffeine Carl or Espresso Eddie or whatever that dude's yeah, name? Yeah, Caffeine list? Carl in the buzz, man. Yeah, unfortunately, I did. I didn't. I didn't. Uh, I didn't get there. And I didn't Carl get to the little mojito guy. I was so bummed because I love a good mojito. Oh, but you know what? Here's the thing. I have to update that. That. This is crazy. Mr. Mojito passed away. <gasps> well, then he's, I would. He's, dang it! Yeah, he's not even there anymore. We went the last time. Wow. Um, we walked. We walked over to his place, and his cart was sitting there with a tarp over it. So we googled mm. it and found out he passed away at the end of May. Okay. So that was definitely the death of a legend, right there, because there is no mojito on Earth greater than what yeah, no, that I'm dude made. About that, because I was I was looking forward to. It. But anyway, that's neither here nor there. Um, yeah, always a good time. Oh, it's a good time. Nice. That, if, if, that's it's, the it's, one place you can go where you literally have zero stress. The minute I got off the plane, it all just went away. 
<laughs> I got back on that following Tuesday, I could feel it creep back. I hate that. I hate that. This year, it just it's what I needed to just wash away a little bit of this year because it's been so difficult, you know, for so many reasons. Um, but you know, never never unhappy with seeing the sunshine and feeling it on my face, getting a tan, seeing the water. Um, one of these days, man, one of these days. Yep. I, I listen, I I have a theory that if you talk to anybody in Florida long enough, you're gonna find out they're either from New York, yeah, West Virginia, or, or Ohio. One of the three. Yeah, well they just got tired of winter and you know, it, it is what it is, but I'm also I'm gonna have to work a lot harder though, because to afford down in that direction. Oh, it's nasty. It's nasty. It's bad. It's really bad. So I'm sitting here going, well, maybe I'll just do the snowbird thing. You know, that that seems like a nice compromise. So anyway, I've got a few years to go, but it's a dream. Well, the beautiful part for us is it's an hour flight each way, and it's only $59 if you catch it right. So, Well, yeah, that's a no-brainer, isn't it? Yeah, with that's why we go as frequently as we do. We're down there probably four or five times a year. Yeah, so I can see that. So that's up being good. Well, listen – we are running up on time. I know that people will want to reach out to you. I'm sure that the majority of the people who are listening already know who you are from your superstardom inside of IAOA oh, yeah. and your presentation and innovation this past year. But why don't you tell them how to find you so that uh, people want to reach out, they can. Yeah, so I'm actually I'm actually very easy to find. Um, I mean, you can find me on Facebook uh, very, very easily. I'm on Twitter. Uh, you can go to my website, you know, the agency website, galvezinsurance.com, phone number, emails on there. I mean, it's just super simple to find me. And, uh, you know, I've always been big on trying to help agents, uh, just offering wisdom or advice or whatever the case may be. And I've done that many a time uh, over the years. And, you know, if somebody wanted to talk about something, they can certainly reach out to me. I'm okay with that. Cool. Good deal. Sounds good. Well, listen, thank you so much for spending some time with us today. It was a pleasure talking to you. I'm glad that the tour guide worked out well for you in Key West and that you had a good time with that and definitely appreciate you just taking time to talk shop with us. That's all we, all we really do. So, well, thank you for the opportunity. Absolutely. Have a great week and have a great Thanksgiving and we'll talk soon. Okay. All right. Thank you. Take care. You've been listening to the Power Producers Podcast. You can follow Killing Commercial Insurance on Facebook and YouTube. And if you want to take your game to the next level, next level, check out our book, The Extra Two Minutes, and our website, killingcommercial.com.